Hello gamers, this is Rushcode. I wanted to cover something to do with a tutorial that I learned from the YouTube channel Make Games with Katie. So she's really good at making tutorials and this was based on the last one she made number tutorial number eight and it's to do with picking up and dropping down objects. So for example here I have a few objects that I can pick up like this green block. I can put it over here and I can pick up this brown object and put it on top of the green one. So I wanted to show you guys what I did to go about making this happen. It's to do with ray casting, which is like these rays that you can see I'm firing out from my cursor. It uses that ray to detect where it's going to hit a certain surface or an object and then pick it up or drop it down based on some conditions. Here is the code, which is quite a bit. There's, there's a lot going on in here. So let's make a new project. And before we begin, I'll just clean up a few things. Open the level blueprint, create a begin play event, set up the input mode to game only. It makes it easier to run your simulations because now when you compile and play, your cursor is immediately attached to your camera. For example, remove this connection. You'll notice that when I play, the cursor is still moving around. I have to click the screen to be able to move the player. The next thing I want to do is create my custom controller and custom character pawn. I'll call it my character. We'll call this custom control. I want to change the game mode. We want to ensure the player controller is set to be the custom controller while the default pawn is set to my character. Now create a blueprint for the object that we want to pick up. This one's a little special. We're going to create a pickup object type. This is meant to be like a parent class. If we go into it, we'll just create a bottom of object. It's meant to be like a location where you can reference for how to place your object. And that's going to need to be inherited as the main root, I suppose you would call that. We can now create blueprints based on that. So if we go all classes and look for pickup, we can create an object or an actor based on this type. And we'll call this green block brown ball. So with the brown ball, we make a sphere, change the color, raise it up a little bit. One thing to note is that the bottom of the object will be at the bottom still because that's inherited from the parent class, which is pick up object type. So when we place this into the map, it will be placed based on the bottom of the object. Oh yeah, and one more thing to do is delete this first person character. We don't want that to show up when we play the game. So save that, close it, open the green block as well, create a cube, compile, save. The next thing to do is customize our character. Our character has a whole bunch of things on it which we don't need. For example, like this gun, this gun, these hands, VR control stuff. And what I want to do is create a scene and I'll call this the character attach point. It's meant to be a point where you would place your object. So I'll just put it a little further down here. Coming back to this, the main thing we want to change now is the controller. This is where everything happens. So in our custom control, we need to create an input event such that when you hit E, for example, your character will pick up the object that it sees in front of it. Let's go to project settings, input and action mappings, create a new action. We'll call this pick or place custom event looking for pick or place. And the first thing we want to do is determine if we're holding an object as soon as we press E. So let's create a variable. We'll call this is holding something, get that value, put it in there. So if it's true, I'm just going to do a print string just to remind myself of what to do later in this case. So we want to place the object if it's true, because if we're currently holding something, then we need to place it down. If we're not holding anything, then we want to pick up something. So if I play this now and hit E, you can see that in the corner of my screen, it says pick up object. And I'm not able to pick anything up yet, so we can't place objects just yet. So deleting this bit, what we want to do is find something to pick up. So usually you'll do something called a line trace for objects, but the trouble with this is you can't see the line that you're tracing. This is to do with ray casting. So in order to see the line that I'm going to trace, I'll create a debug line, which given the same start and end coordinates, it will represent the actual line trace. So now we need to create some kind of coordinate for line start and line end. The point out where your line will start is at the face of your camera lens, which is this point here. So to get that point, we need the first person camera coordinates, which means we also need to get information about the character. So we could cast, you know, like this, we could go cast to my character and then get the details from there. But this is going to be a real pain to do every single time we need to call the camera and other things. So rather than do Doing that, I'm going to use this other event on possess. So that means when the controller 
is possessed upon, it will fire this event from here, pass to my char, and then I can do a bunch of things here. So I'm going to pull out the first person camera from the custom pawn that I'm using, and I'm going to set that promoting it to a variable, which I'll just leave as first person camera. And another variable we will need later is the character's attach point, which is down here. To get that, I'm going to pull it out from this cast as well, and we'll say attach point, and we want to also promote this to a variable. Now that we have this all set up, we have our variables ready to go. So the next thing to do is get the first person camera and get its location. So get world location. Now, the location is one thing, but we also want the rotation for later. So I'm just going to do the transform because this will give us all the information when you split the spin. So the location itself can be plugged straight into the line starting point. As for the line end point, that's going to be based on how your camera is rotated in the game. So for example, if I were to play this now, every time I tilt my camera down or tilt it up, the forward vector of the first person camera will also rotate accordingly. We need that forward vector in order to figure out where this line will end because it has to go at that same angle to wherever it's firing out at. So from the rotation, we want to get the forward vector. And then from here, the forward vector is a unit vector, which is one unit long. We want the length of the line to be maybe 500 units. So we're going to multiply by a float of 500. So that scales the line. Can't just plug that straight into the line end because that will be based on the origin. It's kind of weird how this works, but vectors basically default to the origin unless you specify in a different way. So if you don't want it to default to the origin, take this vector and attach it to the camera here. So we have to add it to the camera's vector point, which means we have to go out from here plus another vector, the other vector being the camera vector. That feeds back into the line end. Now if we customize the debug line, we should be able to see it come out when we play. Let's have a look. So we're in the game now, if I hit E, it shows a pink line. There we go. And it shows it according to the angle I'm hitting it at. And to make this a little bit cleaner, so that I don't have to keep doing this code over and over again every time I want to do a raycast, grab all of this, create a custom event for it, call it find start end, and promote these values to variables. So this first one here, we'll call it line start vector. And for the last one here, promote that to a variable, we'll call it the uh, line end vector. Now that we have this all set up, all we need to do is call it every single time we want to update the location for our start and finish of the line vectors. So in this case, before we even do the debug line, we want to call this custom function. So we'll do that. And now we can also call the variables and just plug them directly in. So let's check and see if this works. Compile, play, hit E, and that creates the lines as usual, which is good. Next thing we want to do is plug that into the line trace, plug these vectors in there as well. But in order for line trace to work, we need to hit some kind of object or check it against an object. So we're going to make an array for a bunch of objects that it could hit. You could add physics bodies as well if you want, or these blocks out here at the back. But it doesn't really matter because all we're doing is looking for the static ones, which are our pickup objects. So coming out from here, we want to get a break hit result. This shows you a variety of different uh, items and variables and just information you can pull out for where this line trace has done something. And in order to make the most of this, we want to cast to our pickup object type. And this is something I realized. We, you don't want to cast to a specific pickup object type. You want to cast to the general one because the other two will fall under that category anyway, which is great, which means you can create multiple pickup object types all under the same parent class and it will still fire off correctly a according to this code. So the hit actor will be that object. First thing I want to do here is promote the pickup object type to some kind of variable, which I will call the currently held object. From here, we want to take the object and attach it to our character, to this point down here. So we're going to need the attach point and we also need to grab the currently held objects bottom of object position. And we want to set this location to wherever the attach point is. But before we can do that, we want to attach the object to the character. We don't want to just change the location, we want to connect them together. So from this object, we're going to attach to component, and that component would be the character's attach point. Now that that's done, we can also set the world location for our object's bottom based on the character's attach point. So we need to get the world location for our character attach point, feed that back in, and make sure teleport is ticked. If you're holding an object, you need to make sure that's ticked. And make sure that the currently held object is not going to collide with anything. So enable collision set, actor enable collision, so make sure that's off. 
because while you're carrying it around it could be a problem if it's colliding with the character or other things and that should be good to go so if we compile and play let's see if we can pick up this object oh there we go that's good so we've picked it up it seems a bit high let's go to our character and lower this point a little bit more if we pick this up again it's a little lower on the screen and then we can walk around with it and uh, if we try to put it down somewhere it's not going to work but you can see that's because I don't have any code for it it just says place object so delete this print string and we're going to first update the start end conditions again because we want to do another line trace for where we're going to drop the object. I prefer to just put an object down based on whether it's hitting a solid surface within range. If it's not, then you don't want to drop it yet. So let's do a debug line for this, putting in the start and end conditions again, and then do a line trace, connecting those up. And for making an array, we want it to detect only certain types. Coming out from here, we want to do a break hit result. You only want to make use of your line trace if it has hit an object that you're interested in connecting with. And this is where blocking hit comes in. It's true if something was hit. So branch, plug that information in, and if this is true, then it is safe to drop the object. Do a print string, safe to drop. And another print string here, not safe. Grab this object, and if I just hit E and go, that doesn't go far enough, and you can see that in the top left corner it says it's not safe because this is too far from an object. If I go a bit closer, then that's safe to drop because this is actually hitting into a valid object. If I aim it at the physics bodies, it'll say it's not safe because physics bodies didn't count in my array. So leaving that branch alone, we only want to do something if it's true. So in order to drop, we want to detach the object. We need to grab the variable for it, get held object, and detach from actor, the actor being our character. So plug in true, set the world location for this object. So we're going to go with the bottom of the object and then set the world location. And that new location is based on the impact point of your line trace it's teleporting. From this we just need to update the is holding variable so set it to be false and then we want to re-enable collision for our object which is over here so let's connect that there click true and at the end of that we want to reset this object so we set it just with nothing referenced to it meaning it will clear the information in it. If I hit E on anything besides the object it will not do anything. If I hit E on the object it will pick it up. I can carry it around. If I I just hit E in the air, nothing happens, I'm still holding the object. If I go up to this physics body, nothing happens. But if I aim for the ground, bang, the object drops back on the ground. And based on where the bottom of the object is, not based on the center of the ball itself. I can pick it up again and put it into the wall. And the reason it's going halfway into the wall is because the bottom of the object is right there. So it's going to place it based on that point. I can pick it up again and put it just back on the ground or somewhere else if I wanted to. And you can bring in other objects with it and let's see if I can put them all together. So hit play, we go in, pick up this object, see if I can put it on the green object. I can. Let's grab a green block and put it on this green block. Okay, that's interesting. It didn't actually go to the center. If I put this over in the center, yeah, it doesn't quite go to the center because the cursor in the simulation is a bit offset. If this is your cursor, this is the location of your cursor for attaching it to the screen. The game is attaching that corner point to the center of your screen. We want it to be properly centered by subtracting half its width and half its height, and then we have it in the center. To achieve this, go into the first person blueprints, into the first person HUD, so here we have the screen size divided by 2, but that's not good enough because the cursor is going to be placed offset to that. The cursor is a width of 16 and a height of 16. And this offset here is completely unnecessary, so I'm going to delete that. So from here we want to actually minus another 8 units and then plug that in, copy that node, do the same thing for the height, and then this should center the cursor correctly. Now if I compile and play, pick up an object and put it exactly down on this guy over here, and I can see it's almost perfect perfectly centered because now the cursor is in the center of where the line is going. I don't know why the cursor is not at the center of the screen by default, but if one of you guys know then please let me know down in the comments below. So that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. There's quite a lot of interesting things you can do with raycasting and I'm very thankful to the tutorials that Katie has made and hopefully we'll see some more videos from her in the near future that we can all learn from. And if you like this video, smash like, hit subscribe, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Rush code out.
And if you liked this video, smash subscribe, smash what?